Well, good morning. Good afternoon. Great. It's one of the best recordings. So. Well, thank you for letting me uh, be here. Um, I'm uh, Minister, and I have some words to say, but I know Sharon and I know Glenn are going to speak. I want to thank Glenn for filling me in on, on Barry's life. I heard he was quite a, a funny individual, a happy individual, uh, his own man, and did many uh, great and wonderful things and saw, saw the world. So we're here today to really celebrate a life. So I'd just like to begin in prayer. If I could. Would, you, would you join with me? Father, I thank you for your presence in this room, and I thank you for this family. I thank you for the kindnesses, the laughs, uh, the many times they have spent with Barry, and I pray that the words of our mouths and the thoughts that we have would be pleasing and honoring to you, and thank you for our times here together. In your name we pray. Amen. I'd like to read a short passage from the words of our Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Death is nothing at all. I have only slipped away into the next room. I am I and you are you. Whatever we were to each other, that we still are. Call me by my familiar name. Speak about me in the easy way you always used to. Put no effort into your tone. Wear no forced air of celebrity, uh, solemnity or sorrow. Laugh as we always laugh at the little jokes that we had together. Play, smile, think of me. Let my name ever be the household name that it always was. Let it be spoken without effect, without a trace of a shadow upon it. Life means all that it has ever been. It is the same as it ever was. There's an unbroken line. Why should I be out of mind? Simply because I am out of sight. And I am waiting for all of you for an interval somewhere very near, just around the corner. Glenn, one thing that you said and was part of the obituary is how Barry wanted everyone to feel special. And Barry planned his day, whether it was games if he would see you, or croquet, or going to the Heritage uh, Plantation down in Cape Cod. Uh, I thought it was interesting that he, he remembered your birthdays. Um, that's pretty rare that somebody remembers your birthdays. Two things I'd like to quote. One is from Shakespeare. It's a short one. Shakespeare said, life is but a walking shadow, a poor player, the struts of the feet of the hour upon the stage, and then one is heard no more. And Dr. Seuss said, how did it get so late so soon? It's night before it's afternoon. December's here before it's June. My goodness, how the time has flown. How did it get so late, so soon? Barry experienced many events in his life, and I think of him traveling the Greek Islands, but just, just the privilege of that alone, never mind England and Scotland and much of the United States to America. So I'd like to read part of the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3. And uh, if you're a baby boomer, you can remember that a band named the Birds turned this into a song in the 60s. There's a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. There's a time to be born and there is a time to die. There's a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build. There's a time to weep, but there is a time to laugh. There's a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them together. There's a time to love and a time to refrain. There's a time to search and a time to give up. There's a time to tear and a time to mend. There is a time to love, but there is a time to hate. There's a time for war, but there is a time for peace. 
And Solomon ends this passage by saying, what does the worker gain from all of their toil in the sun? And he said, I have seen the burden that God has laid upon the human race, and he has made everything beautiful, each in its own time. I think Barry was also described as a man who made choices. And I think of him on the radio, BZ radio, flipping, flipping discs back then, and CDs. And I hear, I hear he has quite a few CDs and quite a few <laughs> records. <laughs> Those but uh, he chose he chose his path in life, and I can't but help uh, just read briefly a poem that uh, here in Needham we were all made to memorize uh, when we were in high school, and it's The Road Not Taken by Robert Frost. And it's two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and sorry I could not travel both, but being one traveler long I stood and looked down one as far as I could. There I bent in the undergrowth. Then I took the other trail, just as fair, and perhaps having the better claim. It was grassy, it wanted wear, though as for the passing of time, they were really worn about the same. And both that morning equally lay, in leaves no steps had trodden black. Oh, I kept the first for another day, yet knowing how day leads on to day, I doubt that I should ever come back. And I'd like to have at this time, uh, Glenn or Sharon, whoever wants to go first, and you will have many great words to say. All right. Well, first, um, yeah, take this off so you can all hear me. First, our, our oldest brother, Jack, uh, could not be here today. Uh, he's just not here because of his health. Uh, but if you would like to say a personal message to him, we are recording it, and afterwards you can come up and say something to him because we'll be seeing this later. I've done a lot of public speaking, and these are always the hardest. And sometimes I go in without any notes whatsoever, and sometimes rarely I do. And I wrote nonsense stuff because there's so much about Barry to remember that I didn't think I'd remember at all. And Sharon, when you come up, I brought you some paper towels. <laughs> so the best way to talk about Barry, I think, is to talk about the things he cared about and the things that he would think about and to try and be funny, though I'm nowhere near as funny as he was. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's, that's, he was very, very funny guy. And, and in a kind way, it was never a mean time. In fact, one thing that I'll say about Barry is, how many of you have ever seen him angry? I think once for me. <laughs> I saw I saw two hands go up, but people have known Barry for a long time. Uh, but he, he was not an angry person. Very rarely showed a negative emotion like that. He would have wanted me to point out that today is Murray's birthday, because he always <laughs> remembered the birthdays. <laughs> And something else I'd like to say is that there are people that, since Barry passed away, that we've gotten to know and that were very close to Barry in the long, for a long time, and his family, his friends, and others. And it's, in a sense, a pity that what we didn't get to know you before him, because we exactly like the other side of the family here. We, several of us, worked to empty Barry's apartment. We got to talk then, and it was interesting hearing so many of the stories that kind of matched things that he did with us. And so those people were like Sharon, his cousin Gary, his cousin um, Lindsay, um, who will probably be watching this later. She's in Australia, so I tried to get her to come, but she, <laughs> just for some reason, it, it was it sounded like it might be difficult for her. Uh, there's Elizabeth, Chuck, um, who were. His landlady's uh, uh, Elizabeth was her daughter, and they'd known Barry all their lives. And the passing of her mother was uh, very difficult for Barry, very close to him. And that's another thing about Barry is that he had these incredibly long-term 
friendships with people and with so many people. That was just the way he was. And we have Nancy in the back who's on the careers, Steve Buscemi. There's just so many people who he knew for so long that it, it really made him to me a, a very unique individual just for that. So in keeping with Barry's attitudes and tradition, I will say that we were all, we all had one thing we really didn't like about him, that he had the best hairline that <laughs> all of the Williams brothers, uh, maybe with the exception of Arthur, and Arthur is, has been beaten for that many times. Uh, so, uh, Barry traveled extensively. I mean, he worked in places, and, and a lot of you know a lot of the places he went. I got to share a few trips with him, not, not a lot, but what he did. And one of them was a cross country trip. We left Connecticut, went to Florida, and then drove across Texas and all that down, down to California. And Barry was an adventure to go on a trip with because he instigates constantly everywhere. Man. It does not <laughs> stop when you go to places. So uh, when we were in Florida, we went to a restaurant at Disney. Prime time cafe that was in the moment. And the, the waiters and waitresses all kind of had an attitude. Uh, and Barry and I started giving it right back to them. And we ended up getting a roll poured at us from another table when we were giving the waitress a hard time. And uh, <laughs> that started a roll fight. <laughs> <laughs> there were rolls flying across. Tables that did not know this was going on, but something have a roll land in the middle of their table or hit them and oh. pick up the roll, looking around, wondering what in the world is happening. And it was a miracle we didn't get thrown out. Uh, and then my poor mother, who worked with Disney, was terrified that they might have learned our names <laughs> and connect, uh, connect us with her, but they, they, they didn't. Uh, also in Florida, we drove by Jim and Tammy Faye Baker's church. and. If you're not familiar with them, they're, they're televangelists or were. I'm not even really sure if uh, Jim is still doing that. But um, they had a bunch of signs out. And another thing I've learned since he passed away is that Barry had a predilection for stealing signs. <laughs> <laughs> so he made me pull over and he jumped out of the car, he grabbed a, a sign. And the sign was about this big and it said, Jim and Timmy Faye love you. And the rest of the trip, as we were passing people, Barry would just randomly pick it up. And <laughs> <laughs> so there are probably people across the U.S. talking about this, this strange trip they're on when they saw this. <laughs> Saying Barry loved music, that, that was, that's an understatement. Uh, he did so much with it between the, the time he worked with Barry and Casey. He emptied out his apartment, found out just how much music he had the hard way <laughs> and currently got rid of some of it uh, beforehand. So at my house now are uh, 23 milk crates full of CDs and that's not all of them. Uh, and my guess is about a thousand records uh, that we have to go through and, and uh, so far I've gone through maybe 10% of the CDs and I think I've recognized <laughs> uh, the rest I, I just I've never heard of. Uh, so Barry also did a lot of things for anytime Barry was at a family event, there was a lot of laughter. And there was also sometimes a lot of tricks and things like that. So on the cake, one of my this is a, a family story that gets told often. They're on the boardwalk at the cake. There's these bogs there, and there's a little island to the side. And Jack and Barry decided to tell me that there was no way that I could jump over to that bog. And I was very clear with them that yes, I can jump to that bog. <clears throat> no, you can't. And they kept up, and I finally decided, I'm sorry to hear this. So I jumped over to the bog. I turned around and said, like, See? And they're like, How are you going to get back? <laughs> <laughs> they did this stuff off. <laughs> uh, talk about the peppercorn debacle with Arthur here, who Barry told it was candy. <laughs> it was candy, and uh, I don't need that. Uh, 
the, the interesting thing about that fog incident was uh, that they all joined me out on the fog island, and we ended up in this war with other kids who probably did not know what they were getting into for King of the, King of the Hill. To say we won would be an understatement there, too. They left covered in mud. <laughs> Very dispirited. Barry also had a, I'd say, flagrant disregard for some rules. But, but he, if he decided he wanted to ignore it, he would. And we, uh, in Connecticut, we lived on the Connecticut River, and Barry came to visit us. And we, I can't remember if we commuted over or had another boat, but we went over and to where Gillette Castle is, and that's on the Connecticut River, but it's up on a hill. And we decided we wanted to get out of the boat and walk up to Gillette Castle through the woods. Now, there's signs everywhere saying, do not, no trespassing, do not come on, do not walk. They're everywhere, they're on the ground, they're in the trees. You probably saw a hundred signs. And I, I'm not exaggerating, there were lots of signs telling people, do not do this dangerous and they just didn't want people coming up the hills to Joe's castle. And we were most of the way up when some kind of environmental policeman showed up and he's up top <laughs> and he was yelling at us saying, didn't you see the signs? And we were all, no. no we didn't see those hundred signs that, that were on the hill and everywhere else. Uh, but that was Barry. I, he managed to get us to go up that and somehow never seemed to get in trouble for that. And that wasn't the only thing he's ever pulled off. So I'll close out and, and let Sharon come up and correct for a while. Um, so our, our plan is probably to spread his ashes at the Cape on the boardwalk where he like uh, we, we thought about the pond of our granddads, but seeing that that was sold so many years ago, I don't know if the current owners would appreciate random people showing up and throwing stuff in the pond inside of probably, probably the boardwalk. But I'm glad all of you came here. And one thing I'd like you to take away from this is just remember how much fun he was. And if he were here, there, there would still be jokes being told. Because he never, never really stopped. So thank you for coming. And Sharon. Barry's cousin, often say a few words. I am really leaving those paper towels for you. <laughs> so I, I made some notes too because I mean I just said a lot of things that I was gonna say, but um kind of I can <laughs> jump on that, but um he um you know had, had so many memories of him. It was hard to kind of pick things to talk about, but um, one thing I'm going to say, we said, uh, we're not even going to talk about this, but uh, the only one time I saw him angry was uh, a quick, and this is a quick sidecar, was we went to a Yankees game, first time I ever went to a Yankees game, and as you said, it's just because for rules, most people, if you go to a game, they, they hang around and stick with you. Well, Barry decided he was going to take a walk. He didn't see him for five innings. <laughs> he walked all the way over to the other side and he saw an old uh, friend that was, he worked with at the radio station. He found him somehow. Didn't know he was there. He didn't have a cell phone at this time because he um, didn't leave him for a while. So he came back finally at the fifth thing. I said, Where were you? He told us. I said, okay, well, you know, let's have him stay here now. He stayed for half an inning. He goes, I'll be back. I go, Don't get lost. <laughs> he didn't come back. So sixth inning, seventh inning, eighth inning. Now it's the ninth inning. And it's getting late. So Kerry was there too. <laughs> and I'm like, we had to go. My son was like going to camp the next day or something. It's getting late. So we left him. And <laughs> I didn't know where he was. I didn't know how to find him. Couldn't call him. So when we got on the tea, my son and I carried to the tea back to his house. And his phone, my phone rings. He knew my number. 
he had borrowed someone's cell phone. He said, where are you? I said, where were you? Well, I had to go say goodbye to my friend. And then he, I, I said, he said, you have to come back. I said, no, I'm not coming back. Said, my keys are in your car. So I said, okay, I'll make it me check Cleveland Circle. And so we, were, we got there first and then he came and then when he get off, he said, I said to him, I'm gonna kill you. He said, I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, then, you know, of course I figured it came out that way. But that was Barry. Um, he was adventurous. He was the most caring and generous person. He would come every, almost every time he came to see us, he would come with bags mm -hmm. of gifts and I'm sure he did it for everybody that he knew. And it was like, you know, it's like Christmas again, you know, and you know, just all these things that he had, you know, from uh, the freebies that he got from Whole Foods and there was amazing products in there. And it was just like, great. I still have some. And um, as far as the music, he loved his music and he made sure that everyone else listened to it too. <laughs> so whenever we went on a trip, he's like, he was, the, he was the DJ. He had to put all the music in all the time. And sometimes I'm like, okay, my turn now. Because <laughs> um, we both had a love for music too. I love music. We had a lot of things that we loved that were similar. And as, as you said, he is was one of the funniest people. We laughed so much um, all the time, even in, you know, Sad situation, he would find something humorous about it. And that was something that um, I'll never forget. Um, he wasn't really my cousin, he was my brother from another mother and father. He really was my fifth brother. Um, he has so many memories about riding high, Yankee, <laughs> um, and uh, kayaking. We, we kayak a lot. The holidays, Wareham, a trip to Yellowstone. The adventures with Barry were um, always, it was like we were in Barry's world and we're just living a part of it. Because he had, like you said, his own rules about, oh, we'd go kayaking and we'd see like a, a raft at somebody's private raft. It's like, oh, we're over there. We can go on that. No, you really can't, Barry. You really can't. Yeah, you can. I'm just gonna go for a second. You, you know, and he would just live life the way he wanted to. And that's what I love. I love the And uh yeah, I was jumping on the flying thing. So we were in Idaho in this little town, like a little old western town. It had like one main street, and then on the side street they had this um bar called the Blue Moon. And so we went in there because we were staying in uh, in this in this town. And we go in and they had a pool table and above the pool table, they had three dimensional sign. And previous to that, we had been in Montana and they had this beer called Moose Jewel. So what the sign happened to be, the Moose Jewel sign it had three parts to it, three panels. So it was above the pool table. So he's looking at it and goes, I like that sign. <laughs> <laughs> I said, yeah, I like, I like signs too. And something. I never took anything that was valuable. It was always like, you know, but I have a whole art studio in my backyard full of signs. <laughs> and um, so we looked at it, we had, you know, kind of thinking, yeah, so we went out to dinner and we planned our little caper. <laughs> and uh, we, we said, yeah, let's go start the bar here. And then we come back. So that's what we did. And we were like Bonnie and Clyde. After <laughs> we go back, we get grabs the sign, we jump in the car, and we go <laughs> steaming down the street. And we're all laughing our hands off because it was like the silliest thing. <laughs> and um, so it had three panels. So I gave him one of the panels. He said, You can have it. I, and, I, and I had actually taken another sign that said, Alcohol is prohibited in the town of lava hot springs <laughs> and so that's on the other hand and it's hanging in my studio right now 
I was gonna bring it, but it's probably a little dusty, so I didn't want to. But um, that that was like one of the funniest things that uh, we did together because he just he was just so adventurous and so spontaneous. And um, I remember every time I ride a horse, I remember him. Every time I do pottery, every time I go west or I go on any kind of trip, I'll miss his energy and his spirit. And uh, miss being part of Barry's world, but I have his memories. If I could ask if anyone else has something to say. I'm just doing some. <laughs> <laughs> But I could combine a couple of things there. You know, uh, one was all of you. It was a uh, song by Bob Dylan. I don't know if you like Bob Dylan. I don't know what the, the taste of music was, but uh, I can't remember. Was it? <laughs> <laughs> I think of this as, as I read it, as kind of not me blessing you, but him blessing you and giving you a message. From the grave, and maybe the uh, children there, when they get a little older, can you know look it up. And Bob Dylan had a real scratchy voice. He was not a great singer, but a great songwriter. So, and I think if if Barry were here, he he feel this way toward all of us. May God bless you and keep you always. May your wishes always come true. May you always do for others and let others do for you. May you build a ladder. To the stars and climb on every rung, and may you stay forever young. May you grow up to be righteous, may you grow up to be true, and may you always know the truth and see the lights that are surrounding you. May you always be courageous, stand upright and strong, and may you stay forever young. May your hands always be busy, may your feet always be swift. May you have a strong foundation when the winds of change shift. May your heart always be joyful. May your song always be stung, sung. And may you stay forever young. The chorus that repeats is forever young, forever young. May you stay forever young. So would you join with me in prayer? Father, in 1959, a young man was born, and he enjoyed life, and he made people feel special. Father, with his kid-like attitude and his adventuresome spirit, he always stayed forever young. And I pray for the older people in this room that remember him well, that they would always remember a smile on his face and a little bit of devil in his eyes. And I thank you for his life and his journey. And for the younger ones who are here, Lord, his nieces and his nephews, and, and the younger ones, the children in the front row, may they remember a young man who laughed and loved and gave. And I pray, Father, at this time, that you would bless him and keep him, that you'd make your face to shine upon him and lift up the light of your countenance. And I pray that you would give him peace and his brothers and sisters peace both now and forevermore. behalf of the family group here that's very special with the words that we said today capturing the spirit of the man the celebration will continue his memories will always be with you and thank dave for participating and the family members who spoke here today thanks and there's a, a luncheon at the great walk over in wellesley people are invited to at this point to 
the service has ended here. We take some time to say goodbye and then meet up at the restaurant. So, thank you. Thank you. If, if you'd like to give a message to Jack, you can see later the camera's right up here. And just feel free to come up and speak into it. Thank you.